Now, people often ask me, Laura, how do you put up with all these liberals who come on your show? Because they're vicious and they're intolerant, and yes, they're so rude in the age of Trump. And I say, well, yeah, that's true. If far too many of our Democrat friends have kind of driven off the deep end. They spend their days gnashing their teeth and spitting bile into a headwind, every day sinking further into a pit of political psychosis. They're obsessed with Trump. They're muttering about Mueller, Don Jr., Russia, and Bill Barr. I'm recommending that we impeach Attorney General Barr. I don't want to throw him in jail, but I'm ready to do so. A president having obstructed the Justice Department investigation, now obstructing Congress, does add weight to impeachment. If a subpoena is issued and you're told you must testify, we will back that up and we will use any and all power in our command, whether it's fines, whether it's possible incarceration. If only they spent as much time thinking about why the country elected Trump in the first place. Or maybe, heaven forbid, pushing policies that actually appeal to working class Americans. Maybe then they wouldn't be so angry. Or maybe they wouldn't be seeing their 2020 darlings scrambling for relevance, already needing to reinvent themselves. Would you say those are mistakes, being on the cover of Vanity Fair? What's yeah, that? yeah, I, I think it, it reinforces that, that perception of privilege. And that headline that said I was, I was born to, mm. to be in this, no one is born to be president of the United States of America, oh. uh, least of all me. Profound. For a while, though, Democrats were actually bullish, really bullish on 2020. Remember after the midterms? They were convinced that President Trump was destined for, I don't know, Jimmy Carter or H.W. Bush territory. In other words, the island of one-term presidents. Republicans lost women, minorities, and suburban voters across the country that should worry every Republican candidate in 2020 and President Trump. If he's going to get reelected, he has some work to do. The president who lost the popular vote saw his party's national base shrink last night, not grow. That's not good going into 2020. I think it's a big warning, so a big red flag for 2020. Yeah. Well, that was then and this is now. Spend five minutes on social media and you can read comments by liberals and others and you're going to discover that they're not so sure any longer. They see a strong economy and Trump's steady or growing approval numbers. And they feel let down by the Mueller report, and they're dissatisfied with their own party leadership. They're unsure where to turn now. More citizens today feel confident and optimistic about the future, which, of course, puts Democrats in an election year box. How many of you feel confident today that a Democrat will win in 2020? Hmm. I love the hmm. Of course, few policies, the few policies that the Democrats have actually floated have flopped. The Green New Deal is a mean new tax, and Medicare for all is just another fantasy freebie. When none of that seems to actually excite folks, well, Democrats just do the lazy and easy thing. They return to the Red Scare. Efforts will accelerate going forward into 2020, that Russia will play a role again. They'll try to put their thumb on the scale again. We're going to protect the ballot box in 2020 from another attack. The public should know and the, the nation's leaders should know who worked with the Russians. We have another presidential election coming up, and this president has every reason not to protect that election. Well, rambling Joe Biden, always late to the game, he was playing catch up to those guys today up in New Hampshire. He is an illegitimate president, in my mind. My biggest fear is that he's going to do it again with the help of Vlad, his best pal, and we're going to be stuck for six more years with this guy. And that is terrifying. You're absolutely right. And now they have an investigation of the investigators who are investigating whether or not Vladimir Putin and the Russians engaged in trying to affect our life. Give me a break, gosh almighty. Now, let me remind you, that was Biden at his sharpest around lunchtime. And that's their front runner. No wonder Trump seemed giddy today. I'm looking at the competition. You sort of dream about competition like that, but who knows? 350 million people, and that's the best we can do. I don't think so. Even as Democrats, I could pick better than that. 
Yeah, he could have been a stand-up comedian. I'm sorry. Move over. Don Rickles, he's just so funny. Politics without Trump someday is going to be really boring again. All right. If a Democrat wins, you are not going to hear one peep about election interference ever again. Ever again. But if the doomsday scenario comes to pass for Democrats, Trump wins, well, they have to blame Russia now or fake news or something, anything for that victory. And this strategy, by the way, is also supported by social media giants right now by things like Facebook that are systematically deplatforming conservative voices. So the plan is to delegitimize any institution or any individual that gets in the way of defeating Trump in 2020. But in the end, however, Democrats, I think, are making a big mistake. Think about this. After using the deep state to spy on Trump's campaign, then the Mueller probe, all the subpoenas and the new threats of subpoenas, threats of impeachment, what have they really achieved? Barr is taking it seriously, and we're now learning that he's tapped this top uh, federal prosecutor in Connecticut. He's going to get to the bottom of this. John Durham uh, was such a brilliant choice by Bill Barr. John Durham has a very good reputation to look at uh, high-level, high-profile abuses. If I were the Democrats, I would be quite worried. Oops. So what did they get? They get John Durham. We finally have a serious man doing a serious probe of real government corruption. And last night we learned that Barr, as part of this investigation, is also coordinating with the CIA and the DNI. And they won't need a phony dossier or a paid informant or two or three to give them the information they need to get to the truth this time. And that's the angle.